Afternoon, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happier for us than for the Penguins being stuck in Uniondale, New York, Long Island, where they'll be playing the Islanders tonight, looking to keep a, a nice little run alive against a team that's given them a lot of trouble, really, for years now. On the show today, we're going to have, uh, it's going to be a fun show. Uh, Pitt center Stephen Adams will be on. This is a pretty cool guy. Uh, probably more than people know, he's, he's kind of media shy, at least when it comes to group settings. But when you get him one-on-one, -on -one, he's a pretty neat guy. He's interesting. He's not afraid to speak his mind. He's funny. Laid back. And I think you'll find that, uh, that uh, he's a guy that's having a lot of fun right now at Pitt. And anybody who saw his reaction after the big dunk last night against Seton Hall can verify that. We're also going to have Mark Caboli on. He's a the Tribs football writer. We're going to talk to Caboli specifically about the AFC North and where it's headed. Does it really mean that much going forward that the Ravens won the Super Bowl? Are they somehow now the, the class of the division? Or are they actually due for a step back? Are the Bengals the next team in the division? Where do the Steelers fit in? Even the Browns, who've solidified their, their defense. We're also going to have the long-awaited debut of Suckmeter on the air. Suckmeter, for those of you who aren't on Twitter and don't follow him, has become a local legend. He's a funny guy. He has a, a way with word. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> There's one consistent word in all of his tweets. He's nervous. you got to be nice to him. He'll be on later in the show. We're also going to be taking your calls uh, and emails. You can call me at 412-320-7925. You can email at sportstalk at tribweb.com. Uh, any topic, it's all welcome. For right now, we're going to talk a little bit about the Penguins and where they're headed. And I want to calm everybody down, first of all, in both directions. Just as I was saying a few days ago that this team is nowhere near as bad as it had played, the team isn't as good as what we saw over the weekend either. At least it's not as complete as what we saw. And I think you're going to see the reason for that in this game tonight against the Islanders. Because if there's one pattern, if there's one consistent element that's been set so far in this still young season, it's that the Penguins aren't doing well against teams that can send a lot of speed at them on the wings. They're just not. The Islanders did it and really made them look foolish at times. For all the talk about how oh, the Penguins played so poorly against the Islanders, the fact is the Islanders looked really good. The Maple Leafs, of all teams, beat them here on home ice. Why? Same reason. Phil Kessel, Clark MacArthur, these other guys came flying at them on the wings. The Penguins had no answer for it. Winnipeg Jets, who probably by the end of the season will end up being one of the lower teams in the Eastern Conference, beat the Penguins in large part because the Penguins never had an answer for Evander Kane and Blake Wheeler coming at them on the wings. Speed on the wings. Why? What's the answer for that? Are the Penguins not sound enough on defense? No, we're seeing they're doing just fine. Brooks Orpik might be playing some of the best hockey of his uh, career right now, and the same goes for his partner, Paul Martin, obviously. Just completely different player since last season. Chris Letang is getting back to being Chris Letang. Why is it that the Penguins aren't slowing these teams down on the wings. To me, when I look at the Penguins, I see a team right now that is still predicated defensively on first guy back, take somebody in the middle. That's when you watch the Penguins forwards and watch for it tonight. You'll see that when the Penguins turn the puck over and start heading back into their own zone, you will see the defenseman will set up in good position. The forward will come back in the middle of the rink and basically just kind of look around to either side for someone to pick up. That's the problem. Those wingers are still able to come flying through the neutral zone to either side and attack the Penguins 
at the blue line with full speed. And I'm sorry, I don't care if you're playing brilliantly on the blue line, you are not going to be able to do much to slow down a Phil Kessel or an Evander Kane. Uh, I was going to say John Tavares. John Tavares isn't a great skater for the Islanders, but Michael Grabner, for example, from the, the Islanders, who is a tremendous skater. There's an impact that speed has coming at teams. You're seeing that now in the reverse with Zach Boychuk. Zach Boychuk might not score a goal all year for the Penguins and still be a valuable guy. You know why? He's flying into the zone, through the neutral zone, at the blue line, and backing off the other teams, and that in and of itself is creating uh, room for Evgeny Malkin and James Neal. He's backing guys off. No one's slowing him down. The Penguins have to find a way to do that. Uh, going back, wow, 15, 20 years, when Bob Airy was playing uh, left wing, uh, particularly on the Mario Lemieux line, and yes, Bob Airy actually did play on the Mario Lemieux line at one point in his career. He'll be proud to tell you. Uh, the Penguins played a system under Scotty Bowman that was the original version of the left wing lock. And what that was was the winger would come back and specifically take a side of the rink and slow down whoever was on that side. And that's something I wouldn't mind seeing. It wouldn't be a major adjustment. I wouldn't mind seeing the coaching staff try that tonight against the Islanders, where the defensemen know that that winger who's going to be coming back is going to take a side of the rink and slow down whoever's coming over there, as opposed to just coming back and picking somebody or waiting for someone to come over the middle. And by then it's too late. But isn't it fun to be talking about something small (laughs) <laughs> relatively speaking, like this, then about the major issues that we thought that the Penguins had just a few days ago when everybody's calling for, not everybody, but a lot of people are calling for Dan Bilesma. You know, is he in trouble? Is this it for him? Uh, what happened to all the drafts? Uh, and, and revisiting all kinds of history because the Penguins had a little bit of a rough start. To me, I'm telling you, We're going to be, if if the coaching staff makes the right adjustment, we're going to be able to look at that rough start and see it for what it was. And that's the Penguins' inability, or really lack of strategy, in handling opposing wingers with speed. Tonight would be an excellent night for them to find a way to do that, to slow down the Islanders, watch the neutral zone, If they can do that, then you're going to see the Penguins adjust very nicely, I think. They have another game against Winnipeg next week. They're going to play Toronto again. They're going to play other teams that come at them with speed on the wings. They're going to be ready for them not only in the regular season, but also going into the playoffs. Not that the Maple Leafs will be in the playoffs.